Well, good morning, and we want to welcome you back to Antioch Baptist Church, and whether this be, uh, maybe this is your sunrise service this morning, uh, maybe this is uh, your regular church time service, maybe this is afternoon you're watching this, or maybe this is just right before you go to bed, whatever time it is that you're uh, listening to or, or watching this video, we want to thank you for taking your time. Uh, and, uh, and listening in to what the Lord has to say to us today. And I just want to uh, wish everybody a very uh, happy Resurrection Day. Amen. And I was thinking on the way over uh, here, um, I, was, I was thinking about how that, you know, if you're a Christian, it's not just one day that you celebrate the Resurrection. Is it? In fact, I got to thinking about this. It's not just one day that you celebrate the, the virgin birth. It's not just one day that you celebrate his life or his death uh, or his resurrection, but each and every day of our lives, uh, we celebrate just the Lord Jesus Christ and, and everything that he's done. And we, we just celebrate Jesus uh, because we realize um, as, as saved, born again uh, Christians that once was lost and now that we're found, we realize that we were nothing without the Lord. And we realize just he's everything. Uh, the song that we sing here at the church says he's all that we need. And truly that is that is the truth. He, he is all that we need. And uh, he's the only reason that we have to celebrate anything uh, in this life. And so I thank you for taking time uh, to be with us. Uh, we thank you for the good comments. We thank you for the shares. And we'd like to ask you to just keep on doing that. And we just pray that the Lord's word uh, goes out and goes forth. And you never know uh, who might stumble across this video, either now or times to come. I may be dead and gone. Um, and, um, and, uh, and something that's been said or done uh, here this day that the Lord's laid on our heart to preach, um, maybe strike a heart of somebody listening to it. Uh, on down the road. So I thank you for being with us. And um, I know that this is uh, it's a, a different uh, Easter service than what anybody's ever had. Every church is facing it today. We're all in the same boat. But I'll say this, it's, it, and it is different. It's different uh, not coming uh, to, to church and, and seeing the place full and the pews fill up and and be able to celebrate together, that part of it is different. Uh, but one thing remains the same, and like we preached on a couple weeks ago, uh, he is the same today. Uh, he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. And I thank the Lord for that. He's worthy to be praised. And so um, we wanna just uplift uh, the Lord's name this evening. And uh, I want you to turn your Bibles to John chapter number 14, if you will. And while you're turning there, I'll, I'll just make a few uh, announcements. Uh, I want to thank the church. I want to take this time to thank the church for the last service that we had here. Uh, all the church, all the families, and even, even the youngins and, and different ones had made cards uh, for us. And I want you to know how uh, the timing of that was just right on time as far as that was the last time that we were able to meet here, I believe the 15th of March. And uh, I want you to know that I've opened up every one of them. Somebody said, uh, Sister Denise had said something about taking time and open just a few a day. I, I couldn't do it. I opened every one of them uh, that day. And, uh, and I, I still have them displayed there in my house and uh, look up at them a lot, just uh, cards of encouragement. I, I want to thank the church for that. I want y'all to be much in prayer. I talked to Brother Dean uh, Ward uh, this week and be much in prayer for him. And uh, then I also talked to Brother Gary Dancy um, just a while ago. And um, I want you to be much in prayer for him. He had some more scans and uh, just pray for good results of that. And he's got some more tests coming, uh, coming up also. So remember Brother Gary. And uh, re let's remember uh, Chip Preston's family, uh, Miss Tina and Caleb, and we want to let them know that we are praying for them. And Brother Chip was always a tremendous blessing in my life, uh, just very uh, encouragement uh, to see uh, how dealing with sickness for so many years, uh, how he always kept a smile on his face and, uh, and laugh. And so, so be much in prayer for him and other ones that lost loved ones. 
uh, but uh, be in prayer for, for his family. So I want to mention those things, but uh, if you found your place in John chapter number 14, uh, this is probably uh, one of the most familiar chapters in the Bible. And um, uh, a time, uh, uh, time like this, a time such as this, uh, we, we turn to it a lot. And uh, I want to read one verse out of John chapter number 14. And uh, I want to read verse number 19, John 14 and verse number 19. Then we're going to go back through the chapter and highlight a few verses uh, pertaining to this. Uh, but um, we want to deal with verse number 19 this morning. And uh, the Bible says, Let yet a little while, and the world seeth me no more, but ye see me. Because I live, ye shall live also. And I want to read that verse one more time. Read it over again. I want you to read along with me. In John 14 and verse number 19, Yet a little while, and the world seeth me no more, but ye see me. Because I live, ye shall live also. Let's go to the Lord in prayer this morning. Our Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you, Lord, once again for the privilege and opportunity, God, just to stand and preach your word. We thank you, Lord, for the day, Lord, that is set aside, Lord, to, uh, to celebrate and, uh, the, the resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And Lord, I'm so glad, Lord, that you are alive and well today. And Lord, I'm, I'm thankful, Lord, to know that you're seated at the right hand of the Father. Lord, I'm thankful, Lord, to know that you're still in control. Lord, I'm thankful to know, Lord, that you're willing to make intercession for each and every one of us, Lord, here today. Lord, I just ask God that we just uh, do as the Bible says, Lord, just lift your name up and you would draw all men unto yourself. Lord, I just ask God that you would be with our church family, Lord, help each and every one of them. Lord, we do pray, Lord, for Brother Gary and uh, Brother Dean. Lord, we just pray, God, uh, for them, their health, and Lord, for Brother Dean, Lord, as uh, losing Sister Martha Jean, Lord, just help and, and comfort him. And Lord, we just ask God that you would, uh, Lord, just help our church, Lord, that during this time apart, Lord, that we'd still be faithful to you. And Lord, think about one another and pray for one another. Lord, I, I ask God that you would be with those that are lost and undone, Lord, here, not only here in our church, but Lord, uh, in our, uh, our friends and family and co-workers, Lord, that we're around all the time that don't know the Lord Jesus. Lord, we pray, God, that you would just convict our heart, and Lord, that you would show them their need to be saved. And Lord, I just uh, ask God that you would just help us, Lord, encourage us, Lord, in these days, Lord, of the unknown. And Lord, we thank you, Lord, for all that you do. And Lord, I, I just want to thank you, Lord, once again, Lord, for saving, Lord, a wretch like me. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now, as we look here at John chapter number 14, I want to look at this verse, and um, we actually shared, um, uh, shared yesterday a song that Brother Sanford and Sister Margaret sung for us uh, entitled, Because He Lives, and I'm sure if, uh, if, uh, you're probably familiar with that song, Because He Lives, I Can Face Tomorrow, uh, Because He Lives, All Fear Is Gone. And I believe that if you look up the, the history of that song, um, we realize, uh, I think it was, um, uh, Bill and Gloria Gaither that wrote that song, but, um, uh, said they were going through a hard time in their life and, uh, they just got to thinking about the Lord was still alive and the Lord was still in control and the Lord still loved them and the Lord still thought about them. The Lord still cared for them. And just the fact that he was alive and well and nothing that took him by surprise and everything that they were going through they wrote the words to that song. And, and of course, uh, today we celebrate the, the, the resurrection <clears throat> of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Let me say this. Uh, I'm thankful uh, that he was born of a virgin. And I'm thankful that he lived a sinless life. And I'm thankful that he willingly laid his life down on the cross of Calvary and shed his precious blood. The Bible said it is precious blood and he shed his precious blood. But had it not been for the resurrection of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, if he was still in the tomb, he'd been just like any other man. Uh, but what sets the Lord Jesus apart is that not only did he die, but he came out victorious over death, 
hell and the grave. I was thinking about a verse that we come across in the book of Revelation not too uh, long ago. In verse number 17 of chapter number 1 of the book of Revelation, it says, When I saw him, this is John writing, I fell at his feet as dead. He laid his right hand upon me, and he said, saying unto me, Fear not, I am the first and the last. I am he that liveth. Amen. E-T-H uh, of the word liveth, meaning he ever lives. I am he that liveth and was dead. And behold, I am alive forevermore, amen, and have the keys of hell and death. I thank the Lord for that verse of scripture right there. And I thank the Lord for the verse of scripture that we read in John chapter number 14 and dealing with verse number 19, dealing with the latter part, because I live, ye shall live also. I was thinking about in this, the context of what we're dealing with today, uh, it, it's always interesting, you know, the, the questions of who, what, why, when, where, and how uh, that, you, that you oftentimes uh, ask uh, regarding it just in reading and uh, studying something out, and especially with the Word of God. Uh, we, we realize these basic things here. Who is talking? Well, we understand and we know that the Lord Jesus Christ is talking here. And when was this taking place? Well, this is uh, after they had partook of the Last Supper. This is after Jesus had washed his disciples' feet. This was after Judas had been dismissed. But it was before Jesus went to the garden to pray. And it was before the cross of Calvary. But what we're dealing with here, I mean, really some sweet scripture for you to read. Uh, sometimes just in your personal reading, uh, John chapter number 14 and John chapter number 15 and John chapter number 16 and John chapter number 17. And we realize that he's on the Mount of Olives here. This is after they had had supper and he'd washed the disciples' feet. And the Bible says they went out to the Mount of Olives. And I believe this is where uh, this transpires as he is uh, talking to his disciples. But uh, so we, we determine who it was and when it was and where it was and now who it is to. And, and he's talking to his disciples here. I want you to understand that because I live, ye shall live also. Now these are the men that had followed him, had faith in him, had dropped everything that they ever knew and ever did and followed the Lord Jesus Christ. But we understand that they didn't understand everything that Jesus was to do or that Jesus was going to do in the future or what Jesus was facing. They didn't understand everything, but we know that by faith they had trusted him. And let me say this about the phrase, because I live, ye shall live also. The, the, when a person really starts living is not necessarily when they're born. When a person really starts living uh, physically is when they're born, but spiritually it's when they're born again. Amen. And thank God for that. When you're born again, that's when you really start living. I was thinking about, um, as I was studying the other day, I was thinking about how that you, know, you oftentimes hear the phrase or somebody says, well, you got to live a little bit. You ever heard that before? Somebody, usually what it is, somebody trying to talk you into doing something that you know that you shouldn't do. And they say, well, you got to live a little bit. That's the phrase that they use. You got to, you got to live a little bit. Well, really, that's not living. Uh, the world portrays living and living it up as as the party scene and the worldly scene and indulging in the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eye and the pride of life. And, and that's what the world paints as a picture of living. But I'm telling you this, when you come to know the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, that is when you really start living. All those other years, you was a walking dead man. Amen. That's what you were. You was a walking dead man. But thank God when the Lord Jesus Christ come by your way 
amen, he quickened you. The Bible talks about he, you have he quickened who was dead in trespasses and sins. That word quickening means it is a making alive again. Now I thank God for the day that he come back in my life and let me say this, nobody can truly live, nobody has eternal life apart from the Lord Jesus Christ. But I want you to understand who he's talking to here in the context of this verse is his disciples, is his followers, are those people that had put their faith and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. And I, I want to give you about five things and I'll be done this morning on the thought of because he lives. Let me say this first of all, because he lives, uh, my heart can have peace. We find in the chapter that we read here that our hearts can have peace because he lives. Amen. And so we see here, I want you to notice in the chapter 14 of the book of John, uh, very first verse, it says, let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. In verse number 16, the Bible says in John chapter 14 and verse 16, and I will pray the Father and he shall give you another comforter that he may abide with you forever. And then in verse number 27, I want you to notice this, peace I leave with you, my peace I give unto you, not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Now he's talking to his disciples and he's telling them that he's going to die on the cross and he's saying, I'm leaving, but when I leave, I'm going to send you a comforter. We understand that the comforter is in verse number seven, the Holy Spirit of God. It is the Holy Ghost. Even the Spirit, capital S, Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him. The world, the world doesn't understand the things of the Holy Ghost. The, the world doesn't understand the Holy Spirit of God. They, 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 they can't see him and, and they don't know him. But he says this, but ye know him. It, he said, listen, the, the Holy Spirit, the, the, the Holy Spirit, uh, the, the Lord Jesus is talking to his disciples. He says, ye know him, for he dwelleth with you and shall be in you. Now, let me stop right here and say this. One of the greatest proofs, some people sometimes get hung up. I don't, I don't know if I'm saved. I don't know if I'm, if I'm born again. Sometimes people can even give you a salvation experience, an experience where maybe they were, they were troubled at heart or they come to an altar and they, they cried or somebody prayed with them or, 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 or some, some kind of thing like that, a salvation experience, maybe that, uh, uh, something uh, that they experienced in their life that they attribute to salvation. But, but beyond, beyond just the experience of salvation, there are proofs of salvation. The, the, the evidences, other than the experience, what about the evidences of salvation? We live in a society where about everybody you talk to, uh, I mean, there's some people that will deny the Lord altogether, but about everybody you talk to, everybody thinks they're good. Everybody thinks that they're 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 saved or they're they're saved, but 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 I ask you this this morning: the proofs of it, that the evidences of salvation. One of the greatest evidences of salvation in somebody that's truly born again by the grace of God is the presence of the Holy Ghost of God. Let me ask you this this morning. Does God convict you? Does the Holy Spirit of God convict you when you sin? Does it trouble you when you say something you shouldn't say? Does it, does it trouble you when you do something you shouldn't do? See, what, I, what I'm saying is this. There's a lot of people out there that claim to be saved, but there's no evidence. There's no evidence of the Holy Spirit. And this is what it, he said. The world can't receive him. The Lord Jesus is saying, the world cannot receive him, seeth them not, 
and, the, and, and, know, and, and, and neither does it know him. He says, but ye know him. Let me say this. If you're born again by the grace of God, you know the Holy Ghost of God. You can, listen, I know that you're not saved. I've said this before and I'll, I'll say it again. I know that you're not saved on feelings. You're saved on faith. Amen. I, I believe that with all my heart and that's biblical. You are saved on faith. But I'll say this. I thank God that you have a, a, a the, the biblical salvation is a salvation that you can feel too. Amen. You can feel the Holy Ghost. He, he says this, for he dwelleth with you and shall be in you. Something as big as the Holy Ghost is in you somewhere. It should come out sometime or another, shouldn't it? But let me say this. Verse number 27, peace I leave with you. My peace I give unto you. I said this, because he lives, my heart, your heart, can have peace. He says this, peace I live, leave with you. My peace I give unto you, not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Let your heart not be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Let me, let me tell you about this where it says my peace. First of all, it's provided peace. It's promised peace. It is particular peace. And it is powerful peace. Bible says that it is a peace that passeth all understanding. The world can't figure it out and the world doesn't know anything about it. And sometimes even us as Christians, we just, we just, uh, the, 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 when, when God speaks peace into your heart, when you're troubled, when you're afraid, and when you don't know, and you're dealing with things in your life, listen, when, when God speaks peace into your heart, it's something, it's, it, it's something you can't even explain to somebody else. Other than just the fact he sent the comforter and he's given, he says, my peace I give unto you, not as the world giveth. It's, it's not, you know, it's not the peace of this world. It's not the peace of financial freedom. It, it's not the, the peace of, of houses and lands and material things that the world looks at about as having peace, but it is a peace in your heart. And because he lives, because he is alive, you can live also. I was thinking about some people after the Lord uh, went to the cross and he was buried in a tomb. And then three days and three nights later, he resurrected victorious over death hell in the grave, but did you ever notice the people that he went to in the 40 days? We understand for 40 days after he was, he was, uh, he showed himself uh, amongst men, but did you ever notice this, who he showed himself to? Now, now it would make sense if he went back and, and uh, showed those Pharisees and those Sadducees and those doubters and the mockers and the scoffers and the ones that had denied him, uh, it made sense if he'd come back to them and, and showed himself to them, said, look here, you crucified me on the cross and here I am uh, uh, alive and well. And listen, I'm not in a tomb. I'm not in a grave. I'm alive and I've resurrected victorious. It makes sense if he'd showed himself to them, but he didn't show himself to them. He didn't, he didn't show himself to those people. He showed himself to his followers. And I thought about, just, just by making mention, I thought about if you turn over in the book of John, turn with me, if you will, over toward the latter part of the book of John, John chapter number 20. And I, I just wanna, I wanna, I wanna show you this. All of these people, if you notice, all these people, when the Lord had been crucified, and the Lord had been buried, they didn't understand everything. And really, their world had crumbled. 
But right before their very eyes, the one that they had listened to and the one that they had followed after and the one that they had put their faith and trust in, they had just, they had just seen him be crucified on the cross and, and, and whether they saw him or whether they got word of it that they buried him in a tomb here and listened for three days and three nights, their world just falling apart. But I want you to notice some people here. I want you to notice Mary. First of all, when, when you see Mary in, in, in John chapter number 20 and verse number 15, it says, Jesus saith unto her, woman, why weepest thou? And so we see Mary, how, how sad that she is. And he says, whom seekest thou? And then the Bible talks about she supposed him to be a gardener and and said, uh, you know, listen, if you if you took him, tell me, tell me where you laid him. In verse number 16, Jesus saith unto her, Mary, and she turned herself and saith unto him, Rabboni, which is to say, Master. I'm thankful for this. Listen, you see Mary in her sadness and you see her weeping here. I'm thankful when Jesus Christ spoke her name. Amen, things change. And as, as he talked to her there, and he told her to go back and tell the disciples, if you turn over to Matthew chapter number 28 and verse number eight, the Bible says this, she ran back with fear and great joy. Amen. And I'll say this, God spoke peace into her heart. You see her troubled and God just spoke her name. Aren't you thankful this morning when God just speaks your name? And God just calls your name and says, I'm here. That's, that, that's, he's, he is showing himself. He is identifying himself to Mary. When she heard him speak her name, she recognized. She didn't recognize him in the beginning, but when he called her name, amen, that we see here that she ran back with great joy, the Bible says in Matthew and 28. I want you to look also here quickly. I want you to look over later on in that chapter of John chapter number 20, a man called Thomas. And we know Thomas is doubting Thomas, don't we? Everybody picks on Thomas for doubting. But I want you to understand the Lord come back and showed himself to the disciples and Thomas was not there. And in verse number 25 says, the other disciples therefore said unto him, we have seen the Lord. But he said unto them, except I see his hands and the print of his nails, put my finger into the print of the nails and thrust my hand to his side, I will not believe. Amen. I, I, I think that you can see in Thomas, listen, he is in, in his life, he has got a troubled heart. He is doubting. He, he, is, he is discouraged and he is doubting. And he says this, now this is a disciple here. He says, I will not believe unless I see him and I put my hands, uh, put my fingers in the print of his hands and, 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 his, and his sign, I will not believe. It is a picture of doubt and discouragement in Thomas, a disciple of the Lord Jesus' life. But I want you to understand this. When Jesus, uh, after the eight days, uh, Thomas was with them. Jesus, uh, verse number 26, then Jesus, then came Jesus, the doors being shut, stood in the midst and said, Peace be unto you. He said to Thomas, Reach hither thy finger and behold my hands. Reach hither thy hand, thrust in my side. Be not faithless, but believing. I want you to see what Thomas said. Thomas answered and said to him, My Lord and my God. Amen. I'm thankful, listen, when you're troubled in heart and you're not only sad and weeping, but you're doubting and discouraged. I'm thankful the Lord Jesus Christ to show up. Amen. And he'll reveal himself unto you. And because he lives, you understand this? Because he lives, because he is resurrected, because he lives, our hearts can have peace. If you look on over in chapter number 21, and I, I'm taking too long with this, chapter number 21, you see Peter, 
and the disciples and you see the discouragement and the disbelief and, and, and you see how they're just they're falling back into their old days of, of fishing and Peter stands up and Peter being a leader and, and he stands up and said, I go fishing. And you can and, and the language that the Bible gives, you can just you can just see how their world has crumbled around them and their leader is gone now. And, and this, is, this is even after, notice this, this is even after. Listen, Peter was there when he come and, and, uh, and revealed himself to the disciples there in the account of Thomas. And this is a different time. This is maybe the third or maybe even the fourth time that he had revealed himself uh, uh, and to them. And it says in verse number 14, now this is the third time that Jesus showed himself unto the disciples. So, so you realize this, that us as, as flesh and us as, as just sinful man, sometimes it's easy for our hearts to get discouraged and troubled. And you see the trouble of Peter and the disciples' hearts here. And, and they go back to fishing. And, and aren't you thankful that you see the Lord Jesus comes on the shore and says, Children, have you any meat? And you can almost say nothing worse than going fishing not catching anything anyway. But on top of that, their leader's gone and all this stuff. And you can almost see the anger. You can see the frustration in their response. They answered him. The Bible says this. Look with me in 21. And verse number 5, it says, Children, have you any meat? And they answered and said to him, No. They're angry, frustrated discouraged, distraught, whatever you want to say, just troubled. That's why he said in, in John 14, let not your heart be troubled. And that's why he said in John 14 and 19, because I live. And this is what the Lord Jesus is showing them for the third time. Hey, I'm alive. I'm in control. Don't be discouraged. You don't have to quit on life. And you see here that the disciple Jesus loved said unto Peter, it's the Lord. Verse number seven. And we know that Peter jumps out of the ship and climbs or, or, or swims to shore there. And we see that the disciples come in after catching the 153 fish. And Jesus says, come and dine. The, the peace, the peace that he speaks into us as his children, as his disciples. I want you to understand that. We see also in the book of Luke, and I don't have time to, to deal with all of them, but I want you to notice all these disciples, all these followers, all these people that had put their faith and trust in the Lord Jesus, just like you and just like me, if you're saved. There's going to be times of trouble in your heart. There's going, there's going to be times of trouble in your life. Excuse me. There's going to be times of trouble in your life. But it says, let not your heart be troubled. The cure for trouble is trust. Let me say that again. The cure for trouble is trust. I know it sounds simple. Was it Proverbs 3 and verses 5, 6, and 7? Trust in the Lord with all your heart. And so many times... That's all you can say. That's all I can say to you. You just got to, whatever you're going through, and I know this is a, a hard time for a lot of people. Maybe you're out there listening. You've lost your job, and, 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 and maybe, maybe you've lost a loved one. Maybe you're dealing with sickness. Uh, maybe there's trouble. Maybe there is chaos in your life. I don't know what you're going through, but I'm thankful to know this. If you know the Lord Jesus, I'm thankful to know because he lives, I can have peace in my heart. Let, let's move on. I, I was going to mention also in the book of Luke, and you just take time to look over there in Luke chapter number 24, the two disciples on the road to Emmaus. And when the Lord Jesus begins walking with them, he says this, why, why, you, walk, why, why you walking and sad? And I'm afraid today we don't understand because he lives, you can live. And not only because he lives, you can live, but you can be joyous. 
You can, be, you can be a happy Christian. Amen? That's what we need. In fact, if you're a Christian, you ought to be the happiest person in this, in this world anyway. But, but listen, you can, have, you can live. You can have life. And you can have it more abundantly. Listen, he says there in, in, uh, in John, in chapter number 15, and verse number 11 says, These things I have spoken unto you, that my joy might remain in you. And that your joy might be halfway. No, that's not what he said. Or that your joy might be three quarters of the way. That's not what he said either. But he says that your joy might be full. He writes these things. He writes the precious words of this book. And he gives them to us to, today. And he says, these things I've spoken unto you that my joy might remain in you and that your joy might be full. You can be a joyous Christian. You can be a thankful Christian. You can be a rejoicing Christian. You can be a worshiping Christian today. Listen, don't let the world drag you down because he lives. You can have peace in your heart. Let me say this secondly. Not only do we see in John chapter number 14, because he lives, we can have peace in our heart. But let me say this secondly, because he lives, there is a home that is prepared. Amen. Because he lives, there is a home that is prepared. Verse number one says, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. Verse number two says this, in my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. Thank God for the Christian. There is a future of eternal life. He has gone to prepare us a place. Amen. I don't know about the place. Listen, I'll say this. I'm thankful the Bible says in my father's house are many mansions. Amen. I thank God that it's a mansion. It's not a room. It's not just a, it's not a broom closet. But you know what? I'll be happy with whatever. But the Bible tells us clearly there is a mansion. There is a place. There is a home that is prepared for you. Because I live, ye may live also. There is a future. Thank God for the thoughts of heaven. Heaven, is, as my dear preacher friend, Brother Jeremy Hall says, heaven's going to fix every problem that I have. And he's going. heaven's going to fix every problem that you have, whether it be physical, whether it be trouble, whatever it is. But listen, heaven is going to fix all of our problems. And I thank God that because he lives, I have a home that is being prepared. Thirdly, let me say this. Because he lives, we see in verse number three, there is a hope that is pledged. A hope that is pledged. He gives a guarantee. In verse number three, he says, in, and if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again. And receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. Amen. The blessed hope of the Lord's rapturing the church out. And I thank God, listen, because he lives, because he is resurrected, we have hope. And not only hope of a home that is being prepared, but we have hope here in this life. We have hope and we have trust and we have faith that there has been a hope that is guaranteed that he is going to come again. The Bible says this, this these two words, I will, I will. It is a guarantee. Let me ask you this, has God ever broke a promise? Has God ever contradicted his word? Has God never, has God ever not come through? I say no, no, and no again. I'm telling you this, when God promises you something, 
buddy, you can check it off and you can guarantee it. It is going to happen. You say, preacher, when's it going to happen? When's the Lord going to rapture the church? When's the Lord going to take the church over? I don't know. I believe that we're in the last days. I don't know when the day is. You don't know when the day is. And let me tell you this. If anybody tells you when the day is, they don't know what they're talking about. Because the Bible says that the Lord Jesus doesn't even know. He's just waiting for the Father to say, son, go get your bride. Oh, but the blessed hope the blessed hope of the Christian, of knowing, listen, aren't you glad he ain't dead? If he's still in a tomb somewhere, you realize how many people follow dead people? I mean, every other, every other false religion, every other false God, every other false man that somebody's come up with, listen, they're all dead. I mean, people follow the writings of uh, the Mormons. Church follows the writing of Joseph Smith. Listen, and they put the writings of Joseph Smith above the writings of the Holy Scriptures. And, and we see this, he's dead. He's in a grave somewhere. And the Jehovah's Witnesses, they followed a man named C.T. Russell and, and his doctrine, his doctrines uh, completely uh, apart and, and completely not in line with the Bible and they deny hell and all this stuff. But, but you know who they follow? You know who those people follow? They follow C.T. Russell. You know where he is? He's dead. He's dead. Well, let me say this. They're both in hell is where they are, but they're both dead. I'm telling you this. I'll tell you who I am going to follow. And I'll tell you who I am going to put my faith and trust in. And that's the Lord Jesus Christ, amen? And his word and what he says. And I'm telling you this, you need to put your faith and trust in him. And if you're a child of God, listen, because he lives, you have a hope. You have a guarantee that he's going to take care of us. He's not appointing us unto the wrath. And, 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 talking about people, talking about tribulation times and all these different things. We see the Lord soon coming because you see everything in this world is moving toward what it's going to be like in tribulation times. But the Bible says that the Lord's not appointing us under wrath. Now we may see some bad days and we're in some bad days. We may see some terrible times. We may see some severe persecution. We don't know what we're going to see, but I, I guarantee this, the Lord is going to take us home. Because he lives. That's who I'm trusting. That's who I'm putting my faith in. Is the one that came out of the grave. The one that laid his life down. And the one that took his life back up. Amen. And I thank God for that. Let me say this. Uh, fourthly. Because he lives. Not only can you, my heart have peace. Not only is there a home that is prepared. Not only is there a hope that is pledged. But let me say this. Because... He lives. There is help that is promised. I want you to look in the text here, John chapter number 14. I want you to look at two verses, verse number 13, verse number 14. And there's many other verses in the Bible that talk about the help of the Lord. But in verse number 13, 14, it says, And whatsoever ye ask in my name, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If ye ask anything in my name, I will, it's a promise, I will do it. We see here, there's help that's promised. In fact, in all, I want you to take time to read chapters 14 through 17, just in your own private reading. Maybe if you, if you not do it today, maybe through the week, and just look, just look at the address of the Lord Jesus Christ to his disciples, to his followers. And I want you to see this. If you turn over in chapter number 17 and, and, and we see that uh, there's prayer for his disciples, but then you also see a prayer for the church here. In verse number 20, it says, neither pray I for these alone, talking about the disciples, but for them also which shall believe on me through their word. Amen. There's help. I'm, I thank God that we have an advocate with the Father, and that's the Lord Jesus Christ. 
The Bible tells us that we can come into a throne of grace with boldness. Not, not boldness and, and thinking that we're something, but with boldness and knowing that he lives and boldness and knowing that he's able and boldness and knowing that he can. That's, that's, what I, what, that's what I see the world, the word boldness as, that we can come into a throne of grace with boldness. We have access. Listen, you don't have to, you don't have to get a preacher to pray for you or some priest or, or something like that to pray for you. Listen, you have access into a throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. I believe that's in the book of Hebrews chapter number four. And I believe it's verse number 16. I could be wrong about that, but I, nevertheless, the verse is in there. Let us therefore come into a throne of grace with boldness that we may obtain mercy, find grace to help in time of need. Now, if he was a dead savior, wouldn't be much thought of help, would there? How could help be on the way if the person that you're praying to, the person that you're following is dead and in a grave? But let me say this, because he lives, because he lives, as the song says, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives, all fear is gone. Because I know, I know, I know, he holds a future and life is worth the living just because he lives. But then let me give you this lastly. Chapter 14, I want you to look at verse number six here. And I want you to understand this. This is probably one of my favorite verses. I say that all the time, but it truly is. Jesus saith unto him, Thomas asking me, he said, Lord, we know not whither thou goest. And how can we know the way? And let me just say this about the way. The way is full of trouble. And the, the way, I mean, just talking about this life down here. But Jesus saith unto him, I am the way. I am the truth and the life. And friend, he says this, no man cometh unto the Father but by me. Let me say this, the only way from being a walking, going to a walking dead man to a living, born again, saved by grace, child of God, the only way is through and by the Lord Jesus Christ. It says, no man cometh unto the Father but by me. Friend, that's simple. A lot of people will say, well, you know, they'll, they'll I, I, I've said this before and I'll say it again. There's some people that make salvation, they make it so easy, easy believism and repeat it one, two, three, repeat after me and name it, claim it and all, all this stuff. And then some people make it so hard you, you think that nobody can be saved. But I'll say this, in order to be saved, you gotta go, you gotta run, you gotta come by the way, the door, the shepherd. The way, the truth, and the life. He's the only, the one, the giver of life. We understand that the Lord Jesus in the beginning gave life. The giver of life is the only one that can give life and life more abundantly. The saved, born again, forgiven of your sins, life. Washed in the blood of the Lamb life, the only one that can give that to you is the Lord Jesus. And I beg you today, if, if, if you don't get it, if you're not saved, if, if you're not saved and you understand and realize your lostness 
and you understand your destiny right now in being lost is going to be a place called hell. He talks about he is the love because he lives. Let me say this. Because he lives, I am so thankful that I'm not going to hell. And friend, you don't have to go there either and you don't want to go there. Now, I know that people use the word hell as just a four-letter word anymore and it's just a by word and people use it in just everyday life and they don't even think about it. But hell is a place that you don't want any part of. I promise you that and I can read you scripture and the Bible that will show you you don't want any part of hell. And it is a real place. It's just as real as heaven. But the place of hell is eternal death. Dying every day. Where the worm dieth not and the fire is not quenched. That's what, that's what hell is. It's dying every day. It's pain and torture and torment. Not only physically but emotionally. And, and in the mind and all these things, it's torment every day. That's what it is. But you know what heaven is? It's a life. Everyday life. Everyday living. The, the, Jesus Christ is the son. There's, there's no need of the S-U-N because the S-O-N is the life. And, and there, there's, there's no night there. And just, just every day is eternal life. And friend, that is a place where you want to be. And a lot of people talk about going to heaven. Let, 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 let me finish with this and I, I'm done. I'm just talking to you right now. A lot of people talk about going to heaven. A lot of people think about going to heaven. But I ask you this. Are, have you went by the way of the cross? Have you went by the way of the word and called on Jesus Christ to save you? Repented of your sins, called on his name, and asked him to save you. He can and he will. And let me say this, because he lives, because he lives. You say, where's the Lord at now? He's seated at the right hand of the Father, willing to make intercession for you and I. For the child of God, he is our advocate. But for, for the lost sinner, he's, the, the message is still this, come, come unto me. All ye that labor and heavy laden, I'll give you rest for your souls. That, that's the invitation still yet. The, 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 the hand's not shortened, but the hand is still stretched out still to you if you're lost. I encourage you, I beg of you, please, wherever you're at, listening to this message, listen, watching this video, wherever you're at, if God's dealing with your heart, the Holy Spirit of God is dealing with your heart and knocking on your heart's door. Don't turn him away. Don't turn him away. He's, he's, what he's wanting to do is give you life because, he says, because I live, you may live also. And I'll say this, because he lives, you have the opportunity to be saved. You have the opportunity for eternal life. Trust in the Lord. Our Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you, Lord, once again for your blessings, Lord, for your word. And I thank you, God, for the spirit, Lord, that we felt here in preaching, Lord, this morning. Lord, I just thank you, God, for all that you've done for us. And Lord, I pray, God, for the Christian people, Lord, they may take this message, be encouraged by it. And Lord, for lost people, Lord, that they could be convicted by it and see their need for Jesus. For it's in Jesus' name we pray, amen.